taking another look, this time in HD format, at the Cold Steel American Lawman Blade. Hey everybody, nothing fancy coming at you with another knife review. I entitled the review on the American Lawman as HD for the PD. HD in that case being heavy duty, PD of course, police department. That's because Cold Steel primarily markets this blade both in name, American Lawman, and in all the catalog write-ups and advertising as a law enforcement knife. Able to save your life as a last ditch backup weapon with a locking mechanism that will not fail you. Strong enough to pretty much tackle any cutting tasks that you're going to throw at it in that POU. We talked about the specifics of this blade in my previous review of it. You can reference it if you're interested. And we kind of visited the Cold Steel catalog when we did it. And for the record, I still like the Cold Steel catalog. It's well done, it's visually engaging. Nice pictures of the product. Specifications are always handy. Interesting and informative write-up accompanies each knife. I like that. Occasionally they oversell their blades. We've seen that maybe with some models. Uh, let's see, uh, Cold Steel Pocket Bushman perhaps? And I'll do my best to debunk such things as honestly and fairly as I know how to do. But generally, uh, they're fairly accurate, I find, in Cold Steel. It just depends on the make and model, or not the make, but the model we're talking about. Uh, while we were looking, or while I was looking at that blade, I noticed this one. The Mini Lawman. And thought it would be a great idea to secure one of those for review at TMP as an EDC blade. Uh, everyday carry blade. And show enough, here it is. The Cold Steel Mini Lawman. In some ways, it is a shrunk version of Big Brother, the American Lawman, and in some ways a little bit different. First off, let's talk about the locking mechanism because there's some philosophy that goes in here. For this size of knife, this POU of knife, I think the Triad Lock designed by Andrew Demko, and by the way, if you wanted to review exactly all the features it has, go to the Cold Steel website, grab a catalog, and review away. They have a great write-up. He talks about all his design objectives that he wanted to achieve with it. I have no doubts that it's a very strong lockback, and I don't think Cold Steel in any way lies about the tests they've subjected it to without experiencing any failures, no doubt. On this size of knife, I think it's a nice thing to have. You definitely don't want your blade to fold on you, cutting your fingers, uh, maybe clean off, depending on how hard you're uh, using a knife. Uh, so, And they talk about that. Nice to have. Do you need such a locking mechanism on a very small two and a half inch bladed EDC knife? I will say you do not. Um, that's because the, not, the types of cutting tasks this knife will be faced with, with most people, there's always variances, will generally be food preparation, opening packages, cutting rope, cloth, things of that nature. Do you need that strength? I'll take it. But by, t by taking the triad lock in the mini law, man, you're also going to say okay to some added bulk. And that's why I'm bringing this up. The knife is thick. Uh, I said as much on Big Brother as well. Kind of a thick, blocky, chunky knife. Also a little bit on the heavy side. Um, but the law man inherits, the mini law man kind of inherits some of those features. At least the chunkiness, not the weight. The weight's very reasonable at 2.8 ounces. And I'll tell you why that is. But look at the thickness. Compared against, I don't know, because it's handy, Delicate 3 by Spyderco, thicker. Uh, what else do I have here on the table? Uh, Cold Steel Voyager, medium size. Great knife, also an OS 8A blade steel. You can see that's also thicker. And I had a Skyline running around here somewhere. Uh, I'll see if I can find it. There it is. Kershaw Skyline, thinner. Okay, that is an important, important dimension, dudes, when you're carrying your blade for EDC use. At least, according to me, a comfortable knife is a thin knife in carriage. Again, opting for the mobility side of the equation. When you say, I want that mini knife to have that triad lock, you're going to get that strength. We're going to say, we're just going to accept that. Granted, a stronger knife, thicker knife too. That's kind of on the downside. Also, uh, some guys may prefer a liner lock. Let's use that skyline again by demonstration, uh, for demonstration. Uh, may prefer the liner lock for speed of retraction as opposed to a lock back, you know? Kind of a two-handed affair. Yes, you could do it one-handed less safely, I think. But yeah, two-handed affair. Just some things to think about. Uh, triad lock needs a certain thickness to accommodate the mechanism, as you can see. While we're discussing the handle, on the upside, the Mini Lawman inherits the great texturing 
of the G10 handles that the American Lawman has. I love the texturing on these. They're very aggressive, provides a lot of traction and grip to your hand, at least on the sides. It's smooth on the tops and bottoms. Ergonomic finger grooves here. I have no problems with any of that. I think it's excellent. On the upside also, they did not put in steel liners in the Mini Lawman. See that? Hopefully the light's catching that, but there are no steel liners that I can detect within the blade, contrasting against Big Brother. Also, the catalog write-up is incorrect. It makes it sound like both knives have steel liners. The Mini Lawman does not, but that's responsible, again, for its light weight. And they're thick enough and strong enough, I don't think you need steel, again, in this type of knife. So good job, Cold Steel, on that. Very nice. All good. The blade is Aus 8A Steel. Uh, similar to that Voyager I just seen, I've just shown you, and I have a lot of use with that blade and all kinds of Voyagers, and I'm, I've been impressed with them. Adequate rust resistance, good edge retention. Um, the Voyagers, I will say, out of box come much sharper than this Mini Lawman did. I was not too impressed with the edge, actually not impressed at all as it came out of the box. Kind of dull, needed some serious touching up on a ceramic rod, and after that the edge did come out, but still nothing super impressive definitely functional. It's a hollow ground, two and a half inch, black coated OS 8A blade steel. Adequate. Unsharpened swedge on the top on this drop point design. Again, mimicking the larger version pretty much uh, in every form. I like drop, play, uh, drop point blades for EDC. I think they're good. How's the thumb stud on it? Excellent. Also, lefties, it's switchable from left to right. So this is a fully ambidextrous knife. I'll talk about the clip here in a second. And the thumb stud, thumb stud has no volcano issues. It's easily, uh, you know, it's easy enough to get traction on it. By the way, if you're ever wondering why sometimes I wear gloves, sometimes I don't. Well, sometimes when I'm wearing gloves, especially in HD, it's so I don't distract you, one, with my ugly hands, and two, usually I might have a cut or something like that, healing up nicely. Cut myself on the rocks at about 20 feet depth in uh, Lake Mead as I was doing some flashlight testing. It's just distracting. So sometimes just I don't know where the gloves better uh, back to the blade though there's your adjustable pivot point that's cool like it the lockup on the American lawman is mostly not all the way good if you ask me and by the way I'm not really showing it it comes out really fast and easily really wicked fast deployment I talked talked about the full crumb issues in other words this knife takes a little bit more of wrist action to get out because of the location of the thumb stud and the blade design Mini Lawman doesn't have any such issues. Comes out quick, fast. Lockup, mostly good, like I said. Side to side, really tight. Up and down, just a little bit of movement. Hear that? That's something you can't cure either, dudes. I mean, if it comes to you that way, the up and down, you're stuck with it. Uh, not too impressed with that, to be honest with you. The scales are interesting. Uh, I tried to take the knife apart, and I'm going to tell you why uh, here in just a second. Uh, there's some screws right here, mini Torx screws, as you can see, and it looks like you can just peel those handle halves apart. Not so fast, and that's because you have these pins. I think I could drive those out with a punch, and un is by doing that, you would take apart the triad lock as well. Uh, I don't know why, uh, well, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Uh, I don't know why you generally want to do that, but the knife is not easy to take apart. Not a huge factor, really. Uh, for most users because again, there's no steel liners to worry about for maintenance reasons The reason I was doing it. I might as well start talking about now is because the clip on the Colt Steel Mini Lawman blows Not the clip itself Its location look how far down the handle they decided to mount the clip on the Mini Lawman to me That is a showstopper. It is a showstopper. That's because you're going to have one full inch of your blade protruding from your pocket as you carry around your knife. And I'm gonna roll in a pair of these outstanding 511 Tack Light Pro Pants that I previously reviewed to show exactly what I'm talking about. Remember that has a dedicated vertical knife pocket on it, which I absolutely love. Knife lovers, if you do not have the 511 Tack Light Pro Pants, you really ought to get a pair or several. See that, how much knife extends out of the pocket? And remember, that's a thick blade, it's not thin. And in my carriage of the blade, and I did it for a couple weeks, it was bugging me. I was banging into it. I always, even though it's a lightweight blade, that's not the factor. It's the bulk that's the factor. And the fact that you have a lot sticking out of your pocket. Some guys will dig having that much to extract. I don't. 
as I've said in all my knife videos, I like it when the knife buries deeply in pocket. By way of contrast, also a competitor to the Cold Steel Mini Lawman. Let's look at this knife. I'm going to review this one soon. The Outstanding Lone Wolf Blackfoot Knife. What a great blade this is. And see how that buries in the pocket. It has a pivot mounted clip, which isn't too cool. Okay, I'll give you that. Huh. See the difference? Big, big difference. And it's easy enough still to extract. And that's in a dedicated knife pocket. How about if we go to a corner pocket? Again, I love the 511 pants. They have the suplex reinforcements on the corners of the pocket. Now, granted, to make this go in this pocket, in this orientation, I'm right-handed best. I probably ought to reverse the clip. And it is reversible, lefties. Sinking it down. You see how much force, I, by the way, I have to press down on? Why is that? It's because there's highly textured G10 still under that clip, Cold Steel. You should smooth it out, much like I do in my epoxy modifications on the Voyager series. I put JB Weld under there, and then you can get your knife off and on your pocket without shredding it. But still, as I seat it completely in the corner of this pocket, dudes, there's a lot of knives showing. Look at that. If you're trying to hide your blade, forget it. If you're trying not to lose your blade, you might want to forget that too. It can get snagged or popped out by brush. And I'm talking from experience again. Been there, done it. Where my knife got bumped, pops out a little bit. And next time you go through some brush busting, your knife is gone. And you reach down and, oh crap, I lost my blade. It sucks. The Colt Steel Mini Lawman clip location is a showstopper for me. That's getting back to my original point. That is why I was attempting to take the knife apart to see if I could relocate it. Um, I took the, the clip off and no problem. And there is room to relocate it up here. And why they didn't do that, I'm just mystified. I really am. The clip should be riding right here. So I was seeing, can I drill and tap through the G10 into the... There is a steel, uh, a portion of steel, at least in this portion, uh, here that the screws go into. You know what? Make sure I'm not telling you wrong. Yeah, there might be some steel in there some way, so I'm sorry if I'm wrong, but you don't readily see it as you can look inside. You don't see steel liners there, but there might be an insert that these screw into. But back to my point, what I was trying to do is seeing if I could drill and tap that clip to this location. But here is a construction screw there and watch the other side, it's asymmetrical. See that? So really it'd be difficult for you to relocate the clip here because you would run into this screw, I think, coming through the other side. I could be wrong, and again, I didn't take the knife all the way down because I wasn't willing to drive these pins out and just create a big old project for myself at the time. So I don't like the location. Let's just leave it at that. It sucks. There's so many other better designs. Uh, and actually, if you're really sold on the strength of the blade, equally strong knives as well. How about the Benchmade? What model is this? The 556, 2.6 ounces. This one in 440 steel, currently being made in 154 CM, previously reviewed. Every bit as strong. Well, maybe not every bit, but pretty much the same strength as the Mini Lawman. Extremely fast, ergonomic, great blade shape, and getting to the clip much deeper. See, this is a, the difference in extension. As I line up the tops of the clips, look at the differences between what you're gonna have protruding from your pocket. What a great knife. And these are fairly close in price. Benchmade is gonna be a little bit more, but the Mini Lawman is gonna run, what, around $45, a little bit more, a little bit less, of course. The mini grip, 60-ish, uh, a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on where you go. Of course, in annotation, you'll see where I always recommend going whenever they have the blades. I buy it there. Just a thought, though. The clip itself on the Mini Lawman, I actually like. They got it right. Uh, going back to my medium Cold Steel Voyagers, remember how I had to reprofile those clips to kind of achieve the same effect that the Mini Lawman already has? That is a low profile, unobtrusive pocket clip that doesn't catch on stuff and scratch your car doors as you're going through your everyday activities. Many, uh, that's the Voyager modified by me, and that's as it comes from the factory. It's just the location. Don't like the location. In all other ways, uh, the Mini Lawman is actually a pretty good EDC blade. You got to get past that chunkiness. You got to get past that very high mounted clip. Um, to do it and maybe you know a little bit of wiggle in my example if you're good with that then i think it's an edc blade that you'll be happy with there are other options as i've shown you the benchmade 556 of course what a great blade that is the lone wolf blackfoot and actually i prefer this knife much more than the lawman 
I like the blade shape, modified drop point, extremely fast in deployment. Also highly textured G10 scales, low mounted or high mounted clip for low carry. And this has a blade steel of S30V. And yeah, it's going to be a little bit heavier, 3.8 ounces, but around the same price level. You know, 55 bucks maybe if you look around, a little bit more, a little bit less. So right in the same price category as the Lawman. And then even a little bit heavier might be the outstanding, and I have to review this knife still, Kershaw Pack Rat. What a great blade that is. Great blade. 14 C2 8 inch steel, which I'm still learning about. Price is going to be right around where the Lawman is as well. This is an assisted opening knife. By the way, I love the serrations that Kershaw puts on them. And I opted for a partially serrated version for review because I like them. It's rare I like serrations, but Kershaw gets it right. And this is a liner lock, not a lock back. But like I said, for most uses, you'll be very happy with a liner lock. Mini law, man. I probably forgot a lot of stuff. If I did, I'll annotate it. Oh, by the way, why do you need a lanyard hole? I don't need a lanyard hole for a knife of this size. For Big Brother, you bet you, I'll take it. Uh, but for Mini Law, man, don't need it. I'd much prefer you guys to relocate that clip here. I think it'd be a much more popular knife. There you have it, the review on the Cold Steel Mini Lawman by Nut and Fancy. Uh, I would like it better if those items were fixed. And there you have it. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for ratings. We'll do another knife review soon.